Welcome to the Managing Security for User-Defined Objects tutorial. This tutorial provides an overview of User-Defined Object Security in JD Edwards Enterprise One, shows how to set up User-Defined Object Feature Security, and shows a two-part security scenario that shows how to authorize an Enterprise One user to create and publish User-Defined Objects, and then how to authorize other users to view a shared User-Defined Object. Enterprise One provides tools for creating custom grid formats, queries, watch lists, and other items that enable users to personalize their Enterprise One user experience. When these items are created, they are saved in Enterprise One as user-defined objects, which I'll pronounce using the acronym UDO, pronounced UDO when referring to user-defined objects. UDO Security determines which UDO features are available in Enterprise One, who can create UDOs for their own personal use, who can request to publish UDOs for sharing with other users, who can modify shared UDOs created by other users, and finally, who can view or work with shared UDOs. By default, UDO features or the design panels that users use to create user-defined objects are not available in Enterprise One until you activate them using UDO feature security. For example, here you can see that the Query Manager, which is the design panel for creating queries, is available in this application because the query feature was activated through UDO Feature Security. To set up permissions to determine who can create UDOs, request to publish or share UDOs, or modify shared UDOs, you use UDO Action Security. And then you create UDO View Security records to determine who can view and use shared UDOs. So let's look at UDO Feature Security in the Enterprise One Security Workbench, which you can use to enable or disable the UDO features. Remember that when you enable or activate a UDO feature, the feature appears system-wide on all Enterprise One application forms that support the UDO feature. So let's look at the Security Workbench form that controls feature security. This is the Security Workbench in Enterprise One. To access the revised feature enablement form, select the Form menu and then select Feature Security. Here on the Revised Feature Enablement form, you can select the row for the UDO feature and then click the icon to toggle the status to active or inactive. So for example here, if I select the row for watch list feature and if I decide to deactivate it, I can just click this green icon here. The red square indicates that the watch list feature is now inactive in Enterprise One. As you can see from the informational message at the top of the screen, anytime you change feature security in Enterprise One, you should clear the security cache in order for the security to take effect. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll leave the security as is, so that all UDO features are active. Now that we've seen that all UDO features are activated, in the next part of this tutorial, we will show a scenario that depicts setting up UDO action security that authorizes a user to create a query UDO and request to publish it. And then we'll show how to set up UDO View Security to authorize other Enterprise One users to work with the query UDO. In this scenario, we are going to authorize user ID SB66214 to create and publish query UDOs. To set up UDO Action Security, let's access Enterprise One again. In the Security Workbench, select the Form menu, User Defined Object, and then the Action menu. In addition to the action and view security options that we'll use in this tutorial, you can see here that there's also an option for content security. This is used to authorize access to content within composite application framework UDOs. For more information about this option, refer to the UDO security documentation. So let's go ahead and select action. On work with user defined object action security, click the add button. On this next form, select the Object Type drop-down menu and select from the list of available UDO types. You define action security by UDO type, such as Enterprise One Pages, One View Watch Lists, and so forth. For this scenario, we'll select Query. You can create the security records directly in the grid. In the User Role field, you can enter a specific user, a role, or you can enter Star Public if you want the security to apply to all users. I'll enter SB66214 and then I'll tab to the next field. For app object name, you can enter the application ID of the application to which you want to apply the UDO action security. Instead, let's enter star all here to authorize the user to perform actions in any application form that supports the query manager. And then we'll tab to the next field. 
It's important to remember that application security in Enterprise One supersedes UDO action security. So the user is only going to be able to work with the query manager in applications in which the user is authorized to access through application security. And in this scenario, we will not refine the security any further by entering a specific form or version. For access level, this is where you specify the level of action security you want to apply. So in the drop-down menu, we can select Create, Create and Publish, or Create, Publish, Modify. It's also important to note the Disable, Create, Publish, and Modify option here. You can use this option to expedite the creation of UDO action security records. For example, you could create an action security record for Star Public to authorize all Enterprise One users to create, publish, and modify a UDO type. And then you can use this Disable, Create, Publish, and Modify option to create security records for individual users or members of a role that you want to disallow or prevent from creating, publishing, and modifying UDOs. In this scenario, we want to authorize the user to create and publish query UDOs, so I'll select Create and Publish. As an alternative to using the Access Level drop-down menu, you can click the icons in the Create, Publish, or Modify columns to activate or deactivate the action security. When using the icons to select the security level, notice that the security level is reflected in the access level column in the grid. So here if I select modify, this changes the access level to create, publish, and modify. For this record, I'll select create and publish and then click the save button to save it. So now that we've authorized this user to create and publish query UDOs, let's take a look at an application that this user has access to an application that supports the Query Manager. So in this application, I'll select the icon to open the Query Manager. For the purposes of this tutorial, I already logged in as SB user, created a query, and named the query Competitor Addresses when I saved it. When you select this drop-down menu, notice that this query is in the user's personal list of queries. You can see here that by hovering over the Save icon at the top of the Query Manager, I can create a new query and save one because the user is authorized to create queries. So I'll select the competitor addresses query and because we authorize this user to publish UDOs, you can see that the request to publish icon is enabled. If this user was not authorized to create and publish UDOs, this icon would be grayed out and unusable. If we would have authorized this user to modify shared UDOs, the user could select a shared UDO and then select a reserve icon to modify it. With the competitor addresses query selected, I'll go ahead and select the request to publish icon to submit it for approval so it can be shared with other users. So next we'll show how to approve this UDO and set up view security for it so other users can access it. Before other users can view and work with the competitor addresses UDO, two things have to happen. An administrator or power user has to approve the UDO for sharing. After the UDO has been approved for sharing, an administrator or power user sets up view security to determine which users can use the shared UDO. To set up view security, Enterprise One provides two separate view security forms. One form is available through Security Workbench. An administrator who has access to Security Workbench can use this form to set up view security for individual UDOs such as the competitor addresses UDO in our scenario or they can set up view security for all shared UDOs of a particular UDO type. The other view security form is accessible from the Work With User Defined Objects application, the application that is used to approve or reject UDOs submitted for sharing. If authorized, the same person responsible for approving UDOs for sharing can in tandem access a view security form to authorize users to use the shared UDOs. However, it is important to note that with this form, you can only set up view security for individual UDOs, not all UDOs of a particular UDO type. The benefit of setting up UDO view security through the approval application is that you can authorize someone other than a system or security administrator to manage view security for shared UDOs. In other words, you can have a power user manage view security without giving them access to security workbench. Regardless of which view security form you use, the security records are reflected in both versions of the security form. For this scenario, we will first access the Work With User Defined Objects application and approve the competitor address as you do for sharing. And then from this application, we'll access the view security form to authorize other Enterprise One users to work with as you do. 
On Work with User Defined Objects, first I'll select Pending Approval from the User Defined Objects Status drop down menu. And then I'll click the Find button. You can see that the system loads all records awaiting approval. On this form, you can perform other tasks such as reviewing the functionality of the UDUs before approving, or you can reject UDUs, which is all described in another tutorial in the documentation for UDU approvals. Here I will select the competitor addresses UDU. And I'll go ahead and select the Cloud9 SO's UDU to show how you can approve multiple UDUs at the same time. In the Row menu, I'll select Approve and Share. You can see that in the Status Description column that the status for these two UDUs has been changed from Pending Approval to Shared. So now we can set up View Security to authorize other Enterprise One users to use these UDUs. To do so, first I'll select the drop-down menu next to User Defined Object Status field and I'll select Shared. And then I'll click the Find button. Next, I'll click the User Defined Object Type drop down menu and select the Query Type and click Find so we can filter the results just by queries. In the first column in the grid, you can select multiple UDUs to apply View Security to. So I'll select the Competitor Addresses UDU and then I'll go ahead and select the Applicant Addresses UDU as well. Next, I'll select the Row menu, Advanced, and then Security. Enterprise One displays the shared UDUs in the Work with User Defined Object View Security form. Since we selected multiple records, this form displays the first record in the header area. You can click the right arrow to access each shared UDU record for which you want to set up View Security. Also, notice that there's a View Security record for Star Public already created for this UDU. This is because, as I mentioned earlier in this tutorial, an administrator can set up view security for all UDU records of a particular UDU type. And in this case, an administrator has already set up a view security record so Star Public or all users can access query UDUs as long as they have been approved for sharing first. So since we're on the record for competitor addresses, I'll go ahead and click the Revise View Security tab. Here we can create multiple security records if needed. For example, since there's already a star public record for viewing all query UDUs, I can create additional records to disallow any roles or users from using this UDU. So in this case, I'll enter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the user role field. As you can see here, the icon is red, which means that for this role, the view security is inactive. And then click the save icon to save the record. As you can see here, I can click this left directional arrow to return to the previous record and set up view security for the other record we selected in the approval application. So I can go ahead and enter a user here, and I'll just go ahead and enter the same role that we used before. And I'll go ahead and save this record as well. It's important to note that if you add, modify, or delete view security, users must clear the cache in their browser for the changes to take effect. Next, let's see how another user can now access the competitor address as you do. This is the address book application. Again, for the purposes of this tutorial, I've already signed in Enterprise One as another user and opened this application. When I click the query drop-down menu, as this user, I can now use the competitor addresses query to perform a query in this application. So this concludes the Managing Security for User Defined Objects tutorial. In this tutorial, you have learned about security for UDUs, which includes UDU feature security, action security, and view security. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up UDU security, refer to the documentation. Also, for additional information on how to work with UDU features, see the documentation and other available tutorials. Thank you.